Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to an amazing episode of the Brave Entrepreneur Podcast, and I am your host, Jenna Rodriguez, and I am your brand business and brave strategist, helping entrepreneurs worldwide really discover what their brand is all about, how to articulate it, how to monetize it, and truly package the natural talents that you offer the world so that you can live a freedom life and also influence the people that you really want to influence in the world. So. This show is just an opportunity for me to uh, introduce you. Um, we've got an amazing guest. Angelica is our guest. Say hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> right? Everybody can see her beautiful face. And we are going to have an amazing conversation about her story and what she does for people in the website world. Um, she's an amazing talent. And this show is so much about our story and you know, and what brilliance they bring to the world and, and what brought them here, you know, and I think there's always a journey. So I'm excited uh, to learn um, and share uh, and Angelica's story as well. <coughs> but first, excuse me, as I cough, uh, I want to first share with you her official bio and then she can share a little bit more about um, her story. So uh, Angelica Dazelle is a web designer and brand strategist who specializes in Lux branding and website creation for female entrepreneurs. And she is completely self-taught in web design and believes that a website should be as strategic as it is beautiful. And that is something I agree with 100%. Um, and she focuses on optimizing websites for maximum client and email list subscribers. And so I want to learn more. And so thank you for that. And I want to learn more about where and how did you get this, get to this place? Like what really brought you to this and how else do you help people? Uh, it's such a crazy story because honestly, if you had known me three years ago, four years ago or something, I would never have believed that I would be where I am right now because, you know, as it says in my, in my bio, I'm completely self-taught in web design. So my degree is in broadcast news. I used to wow. want to be a, a local TV reporter. I was a producer for years in, um, in two different markets. So I worked in local news and uh, I ended up getting into PR and taking more and more projects in my PR job at a university where I was doing design. So I started taking some continuing education courses to learn Photoshop, uh, take it a little bit further, learn video editing and just those kind of things. So I just started to get a really a multimedia type of background yeah. and some people started just asking me to do little projects for them on the side, video editing things. And I, you know, I made my first, I think $150 or something. And I was like, wait, this is something you can really do. Yeah. You know, I could take this money and spend it on, you know, like a, a, a wallet from Michael Kors or whatever. I think that's what I spent on the first <laughs> one. You know, it's like I had this running around money in addition to my nine to five. And, you know, right. things just kind of really moved quickly after that. I kind of made a decision that I wanted to pursue this and make it my job. I wanted to leave my nine to five and that kind of thing. So really within about five months from me taking my first client, to me leaving my nine to five, it was about a five month span. Wow. Time, essentially. So, um, things really just kicked up and it was making that decision to leap. You know, I don't think I wasn't expecting to leap that quickly, but logistically it just worked out that way. You know, you got your work contracts and stuff where your contract right. is ending here. Do you want to renew for two more years? You know, same with my lease and my, um, apartment. So, you know, I just said, I'm, I'm going to take the leap. I'm going to do it. So that, that's how it happened. Wow. You know, and that's so amazing because I know it may, I mean, the way you delivered it, it's like no big deal. <laughs> right? like, it's, so, it's so easy. But of course, that's what's on the other side of, of getting brave and, and being willing to take that leap of faith. So tell us a little bit more about that experience. Did you, I mean, was it that easy for you or were you kind of like, no, oh, this is pretty scary. It's new. What if I don't fail? Did you have a lot of what ifs going on or just kind of share with us the inside scoop? Yeah, I had a lot. I mean, it was, it was absolutely terrifying to think oh about it. <laughs> I mean, joking been, around here, right? You're right. I've always been the girl who just wanted a stable nine to five and those benefits, you know, and just have everything come in predictably. I've always been that girl. Yeah. And it was really just like a radical change. Uh, me making, you know, the, the first money on the side where I, and then I started to be inspired by other entrepreneurs online and seeing their stories and what they could do that really kind of pushed me toward that. It also helped that logistically, that was the choice I needed to make. It was like, you can either... Right. You can either leave or you can stay in this job for two more years and be, you know, contractually obligated to it, you know, like, so logistically, it was something that I needed to do. It also helped that I had a friend of mine who was like, move in with me for a couple of months after you leave your job. 
And that way you can kind of build your business up and be able to go out on your own. So all of wow. that, I like I had a little safety net where I stayed with my friend for a couple months. Um, and then I was really able to just kind of go out on my own after that. Yeah, so that's amazing. So yeah, that's what I want, want people to hear is that, you know, when you know, safety is an illusion, <laughs> for mm -hmm. sure, right? You know, and I know that a lot of a lot of people listening, and I think that's what you you said something about, you looked out to other people and going, okay, can, can I do this? They did it. You know, they're an example of that it can work if you do the right, you know, make the right decisions or at least make a decision. And so that's what this show is all about. I trust that people are listening, uh, especially those that may still be in the nine to five wanting to be an entrepreneur or they're just in the beginning stages and they want to um, keep their brave on, right? And stay in the game. And, uh, and so that's what you're showing all of us is that you can do this. You can take the leap of faith. You can make fast decisions. You can make things that are um, some predictability, but not always, and still land on your feet. And so how long have you, uh, if you don't mind sharing, uh, how long have you been in business, I guess? How long ago was that? I've been in business for about two years now. It was around oh. August of 2015 that I started my business and I left my nine to five in like February or so. Okay. So, um, so I've been, I've been gone, I've been out of my nine to five for about a year and six months or so. Yeah. Well, congratulations. You're still in the game, right? You're still making it happen, which I think is fantastic. And I just really love what you're up to and, and the talent that you bring to this industry. So, um, so kind of shifting gears a little bit, like, uh, you know, this show is definitely about brave. So I always like to ask my, my guests, what does brave mean to you? Uh, to me, I think being brave, you know, it means something different for every person in every situation. Sure. I'm, I'm a big history buff, so I'm always, I love stories of especially brave women who, you know, took a stand and that kind of thing. So it's, it's different for every person, but I, I think at the core, you know, it's about making a decision that isn't necessarily the most comfortable, the easiest, the most predictable decision in order to take a stand for either something that you believe in or a dream that you want to fulfill. And it's a, a lot of people would rather take the path that is predictable and easy most times that's the path that people take but I think on the other end of taking that that less comfortable path that more unpredictable path is is honestly the probably the thing you want the most and so I think that there's this phrase that you know entrepreneurs do what you can't what they do what most people won't do so that right. they can live the way most people can't live or something that's like that. yeah something like that yes I love yeah. that <laughs> So, and I was like, oh, that is so we true. We may have murdered it, but that's, a, yeah, that's the right idea. <laughs> yeah, um, it's like, that is so true, you know? Like, you you make some sacrifices now so that you can live that lifestyle that you dream of on the other end, a lifestyle where, you know, you're beholden to yourself as your boss, and you have that freedom to be able to live a life that you want to live in, mold it exactly the way you want to mold it. You know, I can say, um, I, I don't want to work on Friday, so I'm going to mold my life to where Fridays are off, or I right. only want to do work with uh, these kind of clients, you know, that it's, it, there's nothing like that. There's no freedom them like that uh, in just, you know, nine to five life or that, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And just having to listen to someone else's agenda. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, w I came from corporate America. I mean, and I, I loved it and it served me well and it served clearly my lessons and knowledge that I currently bring to my clients, especially being a controller for years. Um, you know, but it, it is where I reached this point called, I know I can be more Mm -hmm. if I could just have the freedom to choose more, right? Okay. And therefore, I took the leap too, right? I jumped out of there. With, with a parachute or not, I'm not sure. I can probably, um, you know, argue that. <laughs> whether right. I, was, I might have landed straight on my face, but anyway. Um, you know, and I think, I think that's a really great uh, definition of it because I, I just envision, you know, we're always standing on, on some ledge, some edge of the next thing for us. And we can, our brain is built to protect us from the unknown, from uncertainty, from fear of like something bad happening. And it's just, its whole job is to hold us back, you know, and protect us, not in a bad way. Um, but everything we want is typically on the other side of the brave step forward, right? And, and, and kind of telling that ego that, you know, that um, part of us that wants to protect and say, I got this. Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm going to do this anyway. And you're, you're going to protect me later, but it's like, here we go. Right. So, um, what is the next brave for you? That's, um, that's what I want to know now. Like what's next, what's the next big thing that you're standing on the edge of? 
Um, I think the next big, because, you know, it was such a quick whirlwind of how I left my nine to five, you know, my goal was pretty much to be able to replace my income and, you know, have freedom, you know, live in that way. And I didn't make goals beyond that, you know? And then you start, you start to see other people who have done that level up. They're going to the, and, and when I say level up, I guess I mean, um, Right, you know, step one for me was having being booked out with one to one clients essentially. So being being able to work in that way. But then you have to start thinking, how can I expand and get bigger? How can I start trusting more people to work for me? You know, design assistants. And you know, that is my next brave is to start trusting a team to do more things. You know, I, my, I, my coach had suggested that I, you know, pick up a design dis- assistant so that I can start taking on more projects. And it feels right. so, because I put so much love into the websites that I do uh, and I'm worried that no one else will do it. And she was like, you have to learn to let go. You know, you can still have some supervision over the projects you put out. You're not going to just let people crank things out for you but you have to start putting care into allowing other people to do some work as well so that you can grow your business. So yeah. that would be my next brave. And then that also encompasses, you know, more passive income, uh, creating more courses mm-hmm. and funnels. Cause that, you know, that is the buzzword right now. Funnels. I, know, I love funnels. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm sure that's my next goal is definitely to amp up the funnels, amp up the passive income and just see how you know I can up level the business. Yeah, you know, that's so good. And, um, and, you know, it's one of those things that like one of the exercises I start clients with is an org chart, you know, like, try an org chart, you know, just like really get clear on, you know, where you're going with your business and not you may your your face may be in all the positions at the beginning uh, but at some point in order to actually develop a true business we have to grow we have to expand and uh and i know a lot of people listening are solopreneurs like you and i and 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 all what i mean by that is that we're kind of the lone rangers that are starting from you know ground zero and we have to build the team we have to build the infrastructure and versus you know a company that may have picked up, you know, uh, venture capital money and they have just like, here's a hiring and now we have 10 people and now we're going to start the business. I know you and I, we, we, it's like, we're in our home office making it happen from day, you know, us out. And, um, and so I think that's a lot of who, who's listening and yet, you know, it applies to all of us, no matter what business you run in order to be business owner and CEO, we have to know what our infrastructure is ultimately going to look like. And that's what we grow to. And so I totally commend you for, um, congratulations. I know we talked recently and I, you hadn't quite pulled the trigger on that, I think. Um, so congratulations on, on moving forward into that brave because it really will make a world of difference, right? Yeah. Yep. So, um, so tell me this, you know, I know coming into the new brave, uh, steps that you're taking and, and just being kind of the, the birthing of this business, what has been some of the biggest fears that you've had to really face? Uh, because I, you know, still at heart, I say I'm that girl who always wants to build stability, the predictable, pitch, yes. you know, all of that. Um, I always have to beat down the scarcity mindset. And mm-hmm. that is like the, the biggest thing for me. Cause you know, um, with, with new growth in business often comes new investments and things like that. You know, am I going to invest in this coaching? Am I going to invest in this software, or this program and those kind of things? And I like, I feel the scarcity always kind of just try to rise up in me a little bit. And I think even my upbringing a little bit, you know, very frugal family, like right. I, I come from a very frugal upbringing. And so I think beating down the scarcity mindset, living in more abundance is, is that's definitely, that's always been a fear of mine, you know, just scarcity. Like what if, what if it all runs out? What if people, what if people stop coming, you know? What if, what if, what if? Um, And that is something that I continually try to beat down. So I'm really big on mindset work and and those kind of things right now. Um, Listen to a lot of mindset audio books because I I don't read books just straight up in my hand. I just don't have the attention span for it. And I think people are always like multitasking and stuff. I like to listen to my books. So I'm listening to mindset books all the time. You know, the Think and Grow Riches, the... uh, uh, the big leaps, um, all those types. Yes, of those are two of my favorite. <laughs> big leap is like I just have to just refer back to that one and just read it over and over again. Me um, too. Me too. 
So reading mindset books, uh, I do like, I like to do um, journaling a lot, which I found has been pretty, pretty good to be able to write out affirmations, you know, write out the plans and things that I want, write out things that I'm grateful for. Um, gratitude is, is very big in business. So I'm always trying to keep up the mindset work so I can push down the scarcity mindset. Yes. Yeah. Let it, let it be there, but not have the power, right? Right. <laughs> You know, I, I'm really glad you brought this. I didn't know what you would say, but I love that you answered this because I so believe, and I'm with you, like that's a big part of my world is mindset. And I have my mindset coaches. I'm actually, ironically, I'm uh, in this moment, I'm, I'm looking, I'm partnering with uh, some other entrepreneurs and we're coming together in a transformational mindset company. And, and because it's so important and, and uh, it's, it's imperative on a daily basis because we're the only ones that get to talk to ourselves. You know, we don't have a boss saying, Hey, where are you? You're late, right? You need to show up. We don't have, you know, any of that. And, um, and so we have to talk ourselves out of that bed every morning and we have to talk ourselves into the next brave thing that we've got to do in our business. We've got to talk ourselves and we have to have our own board of directors in our head. And, um, and you know, and that's not always easy without the, the mindset focus and, feeding our brain right um right. and so i always call it the food for the brain right yeah uh, food for the brain heart uh, and and heart what is it what did i always say um feed your brain and give your soul the like oh heart soup and brain food that's what it was <laughs> I like it. Bring food. That's what it was. I haven't said that in about five years. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's so imperative that we conquer fear or doubt or lack or, you know, like we have to be in control of that because it's not, it, it doesn't have to win. It's not, yeah. it doesn't have to win, right? It doesn't have to take us over <laughs> by any means yep. unless we let it. So I love that. And I love that that's, that's I think, what's accelerated you. Like I, that's what I see anyway, is, is the acceleration can only occur when we master our mindset. Yeah. And I definitely try to keep it at the forefront because that includes, yeah. you know, the things that you, the thoughts that you let come into your mind, cause sometimes subconsciously, because I, I definitely, oh, yeah, totally. you know, I keep using the word scarcity, but I, yeah, I do think that's the one that tries to get me, you know, and that's even messages. I've, uh, I've read some mindset books where they say, you know, limit your television watching, limit your magazines, because sometimes like the, the mission of these is to tell you that what you have right now is not enough. Right. Um, and because they have to sell a product, you know, we sell products, everyone does things to sell products. There's to tell you that what you have now is not enough. And that can seep in, it can seep in. Now, I definitely yeah. haven't cut off all TV, you know, for sure. But um, I, 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 I'm always if I notice something is starting to creep into my mindset and make me feel scarcity, I'm like, well, I need to cut this out. That, that's yeah. what I did with The Bachelorette recently. <laughs> well, like, I, <laughs> I didn't like that's, how the last. That's, so fun. Like that's fun to watch, right? <laughs> I didn't like how the last round of the Bachelorette was going, and I felt like my scarcity mindset was like ticking up. I said, I can't watch this anymore. Oh, can't. that's funny. I'll probably be back next season though. <laughs> There's a break in between, right? I like. <laughs> I, it's my, um, it's the way I veg, right? <laughs> it's yep. reality TV shows. I'm, I'm a housewives girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So my, it's so funny. My daughter and I watch those. Um, I've kind of, I've kind of turned it off cause man, is that dra dra drama and dramatized all the time? And I'm like, all right, I've had enough. Um, they need to work on their mindset. <laughs> they need to work on their mindset. Um, and I like watching the voice. The voice is one of my absolute favorites and it's all about talent and people stepping into their brave, getting on that stage. Right. That's a good one. Very so, cool. um, I just love talent shows cause it, it requires brave, right? Just like an entrepreneur. And so what, what advice would you give people listening about, I guess, getting their brave on or business or what have you? of, uh, you know, whether they should start, stop, you know, keep going. Like how, how, what would you tell them if you had the, had the opportunity, which is right now? <laughs> uh, there was a book that I was reading and it was actually a dating book. Uh, but it was talking about how we have to remember that most of the feelings that are going through our body are simple, simply hormones or chemical reactions. And mm. sometimes you need to just relegate this to hormones. Is this real? Or if, um, what I feel um, is what I'm feeling, is it real? Or is it just really reactions? It's the way my body yeah. is feeling right now. 
Um, I, um, I come from a sports background, so I played volleyball in college. It was like my entire life for the first 22 years of my life. And I would get so anxious before big games. Like I, I just call it butterflies or whatever, where I always have to bend over just to like not feel it, you know? Yes. And now when I feel like that, cause sometimes those do, those, they still flutter up before I do a webinar or something like that. Right. Same I butterflies. Like, yeah. I like to assign it to the fact that these are just hormones. These are just chemicals. What's real right now, you know? So, right. and a lot of times what's real is that you are, you bring something to the world. You know, you, you bring something to the world. I bring something to the world. We have something that we can teach people. And that a lot of times they say you only have to be one step ahead of the person that you're teaching to give them some value. And so I always like to remember that when I get nervous before a webinar, when I get nervous before speaking or something, you're often speaking to an audience that really needs what you have to bring. They're not going to see you stand up there and think, wow, she doesn't know what she's talking about or something. You know, you have things to offer. You have value. And you're speaking to people who are ready to soak that up. So I like to remember what's real right now. Is it the, is it the chemicals firing off in me right now? Or is it what's, what's really happening? Yeah, is this actually an ex experience going on? Or, yeah. You know, I think I love that, actually, because, uh, you know, and it's like, um, what was it? I was watching something that... Oh, I know. I was, well, I was speaking at Harvard um, in the summer and one of the, one of the presenters, the host, you know, of the, the event, um, he said, you know, Elvis always got nervous. Mm -hmm. Like there wasn't a destination. There wasn't this plate, this point where he's, you know, didn't get nervous or butterflies before he went on for the show, you know, and, and he said, you know, just expect the butterflies, like expect it, be, know it. It's okay. It's normal for, because you're delivering, you know, um, you know, it's like you're, you're playing the game, right? Um, volleyball was my game too, actually. Mm. Uh, <laughs> ironically. I know. I knew I liked you for some it's, I know we have a lot in common. Like, we could list a whole bunch of things right now. <laughs> my daughter's playing uh, volleyball too. Um, awesome. yeah, anyway, uh, it's a great game. And, you know, and so it's, it's really true to be able to, to kind of observe and reflect on your own, on yourself and go, is this, you know, is this something I really need to run from? Or is this like just a normal reaction for the, the space that I'm in? And, you know, and it's like, I've noticed my, my butterflies get a little less, you know, it's not easier, uh, but they still exist, you know? And, um, and if we can just be really, you know, conscious of that, I think that's a mastery, a mindset mastery that will pay off. Is there anything else you wanted to share? Uh, as far as fear goes, I, I was going to mention that I would say this is the number one thing of the clients that I speak with on the phone. Fear is pretty much the number one thing that is stopping them from moving to the next level. And it's always a thing I have to tell them to that they need that do it. If you're scared, then do it scared because yes. it's really what's the worst that can happen. Like I'm, I'm all about these days looking at what is real right now, you know, so right. You know, how much does it hurt to be able to step out? What's, what's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? Do you think some people are going to talk about you? Do you think that people are going to think you're not smart? Um, because for every person that thinks you're not smart, there's going to be, you know, five that think you are. Or you know, right. however it goes, whatever it is, this is a big old world, you know, and there are people out there who are going to uh, like you for you. It's, it's, I've seen so many entrepreneurs out here who have the smallest niches, you know, and they are themselves in their niche. And when I say small, I don't necessarily mean in size, but specific, you know. Yeah, specific, right, niches narrow. Are, Right. Incredibly narrow niches and they are themselves all the way. People, I see people online who can just totally be themselves. If they curse, that's what they're going to do. They're going to curse. If they're eclectic and you know, they're, they got their um, dream catchers and all that, you know, whatever they are, right. Right. like people are totally themselves online. And this is like one, uh, this is a time like none other in history where you can be that way. You can be totally yeah. yourself and there are going to be people who will like you for it, you know? So what is the worst thing that can happen if you just take the first step out there? Take one step. Give yourself a, well, I want to have this done by a certain day. Just take one step and then take the next, take the next like that. But I'm always just trying to focus in so on what is real. Yeah, what is real, right? That's the message. And um, and because fear is not. Fear is what we make up, right? It is the story we're creating in our head. I, I love that because uh, I do everything scared. <laughs> you know, like that's brave, right? Yeah. So um, this is just really good, positive, ex you know, advice for people watching or listening. And, um, you know, and I think it's what makes the difference between winners 
and non-winners, and I don't mean losers. I don't say that word very much at mm -hmm. all, actually. Um, and the truth is, is we win wherever we play, right. certainly if we play the game, but it's when we let fear or, or the outside forces or hormones, as you call them, you know, mm -hmm. when we let those things win, then, you know, we're shortchanging ourselves from what's possible and all the potential that we have. And, and I just love that. You're correct. I'm actually watching some influencers in the industry too. And it's like they niche and they, they who are who they are and they have a point of view. And I think that's that like you and me both are brand strategists and, you know, and being clear on what your point of view is and not always trying to please everybody because you can't, it's right. not going to work. And, um, and, you know, and just wishing other people well, you know, if they don't like you, then wish them well and let them go find people they like. And, and it's the best thing for you ultimately, because, um, somebody told me, uh, I was listening to an interview. Oh, I th it was Larry wing it. Um, he was being interviewed and he said, if you know, the sign is when you're successful, you know, you'll know you're successful when you have raving fans but you also have raving naysayers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, if you don't have anything to say that, and you're not out there talking about it, nobody's going to say anything negative about it because there's not, they're not hearing anything, but you know, it's like really to be at a high level of success, just percentage wise, if you're in front of a million people, you're not going to make a hundred percent of a million people happy. Right? right. Or, or be your person or friend or fan for that matter. So I've, I'm always remembering that. And I think it's really awesome that you brought that up. Cause I, I just think you've, you've shared such, um, great nuggets and, you know, things to remember about what brave is and how you really approach your business and your life and how you're accelerating your, your success because of it. Uh, so I just really thank you for that because um, you and I are very much on the same wavelength. <laughs> like, this is good. <laughs> really good. I'm, I figured, right? Um, so as we kind of close out here, what, um, you know, I know you, you speak website, you speak brand, and you speak this language that I'm very familiar with, uh, mm -hmm. but I would love for you to just share a couple tips of uh, what people can actively walk away with in that space. Like what can they go do right now um, that would help them grow their business and in, in the expertise that you have? So what I like to do, um, a couple tips I have on optimization for websites. You know, the first thing that your website should do, people should immediately know who you are, what you do, and who you do it for, and then immediately have a way to engage with you. So I, my big thing is calls to action, calls to action. I can't say it enough. If you want someone to do something on your website, are you asking them to do it? You would, you'd be really surprised how many times we do not ask for the sale. We don't ask for the action. We want to be, we feel like we're being scammy or something if we ask for something. But the thing is what you're offering, what you're selling will help someone. This is something that will help. You're not a, a vacuum salesman going doors to door to door. So, no. <laughs> and some people need a vacuum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So even they're helping. Selling is helping. Selling is helping. Is helping. Yeah. Um, so remember that and remember to ask for the sale. So that's the first thing is that I always yeah. want to let people know who you are, what you do and who you do it for right off the bat. Keep those calls to action going through the site. And you know, I'm, I'm always, I'm big on freebie. So that's the next thing is essentially what is the thing that you're building your email list with? And are you putting right. that front and center? Getting people on your email list is a really great way to be able to start marketing to them in the inbox. So we talked about funnels. We alluded to funnels a little bit. It's yeah. super important to be able to automate your client acquisition process, you know, so to speak. So yes. ha having, being able to continue that. So once you have a freebie, once you have a list building, and I guess people call it different things, but you know, your freemium, your opt-in, whatever it is. Free magnet, freebie, yeah, yeah. opt-in, yeah. yeah, all of the above. Once you have that, how are you continuing the relationship? You know, are you continuing to provide value in their inbox or, or whatever you're doing? And are you asking for the sale? So I always remember that you should be continuing to try to automate things as much as possible. And, you know, the funnels is an entire rabbit hole that I've been getting deeper in. But, you know, just being able to offer multiple ways for people to work with you. So a lot yeah, of us, sure. you know, it, it may cost four figures to work with you on your signature level and not everyone can do that. But what can you offer in the mid level? What can you offer in the low level? So I've gotten to where, you know, I'm offering passive income products, you know, smaller things that people can purchase under $50. So get an inkling of your value and you're also making passive income off of that. So I like to give multiple ways for people to work with you. They can get a taste of what you do um, at their price range at a level that they can handle. 
Right. Yeah. You know, I love it. Love it. Great, great advice um, right there with you because, you know, and, 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 um, and I think it's just really powerful for people to hear that these are the basics of this age, right? Websites have changed over the years, you know, and, and how people use them. It's not just for information. It's literally a call to action. It's, it's, and people, you know, in my opinion, they go to the internet before they make a buying decision. And sometimes they'll just buy what you offer on the website, you know, and of course you and me both, we offer very high level signature programs that require a conversation versus just here, click a button and buy. Um, and uh, more customized, more private coaching or, you know, support of some sort. And, and yet some people just need a nugget. They just need, you know, a, a sliver of what you offer. And that's a great way for people to either get it free, you know, that freebie or a small low end, you know, uh, package or program. So I think it's great advice. It's very relevant. And, uh, you know, for those people, you know, watching in here, it's just, it's the way the world's going, you know, and I think you, I'm, I'm watching even the bigger companies adopt some of that, um, yeah. you know, kind of mentality. So very good advice. So let's see what, um, what's the best way they can connect with you? What's your, what's the way they should reach out? So my website is angelicadizel.com. Um, you can go there and check out whatever uh, the services that I have to offer. I do web design and branding. Mostly it's a very luxe female entrepreneur vibe. That is my uh, target market, the kind of people that come to me. Um, so that you can check out my website, angelicadizel.com, which is A-N-J-E-L-I-C-A. -E D-E-Z-E-L.com. I guess that'll probably be in the uh, show notes. Or, yes, uh, we'll make the link. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I had a, a gift that I wanted to give to you guys, the listeners, awesome. if you, um, if that's all right, Jenna. Absolutely. Please. We like yeah. gifts. <laughs> well, I have a three day course. It's called make your website irresistible. Uh, and, uh, I have a, a link that I can send you guys to where you can go check that out. It's just a, a quick three day course where I give my best principles for how to make your website irresistible. I do a little demonstrations in Squarespace as well on the last day, um, which Squarespace is my favorite platform for web design. Uh, but that's, that's for another podcast. <laughs> uh, but you guys can check another out that Right. Uh, so uh, you guys can check out that course, three day course, make your website irresistible and you can check it out at bit.ly slash webinar AD, AD of an Angelica Dizel. Excellent. I love it. Thank you for that gift. I love that. And it uh, sounds amazing. And I may have to check it out myself. Mm. And, uh, and we'll make sure we put the link in the show notes as well. And, and, you know, and, and make sure people can just click and go. So thank you so much for being here. This is so much fun. Um, and I just love your energy and having you on the show. And, uh, and so what's the one word if you, if you couldn't, if you had this, this was your last show, your last conversation, nobody's ever going to see you again. <laughs> what is the one thing you want people to get to know? The biggest message ever. The biggest message ever is to be you and just do it. So like I've been, like I've been saying, there's going to be people who love you for what you do. Be you, take a step out there and find those people because they are waiting for you. You can give them a change. So do that. Step out, do it scared and be you. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's the message. And um, thank you guys for listening. Thanks for watching. And thank you, uh, Angelica, for being here. I so appreciate you. And uh, as I always remind you, let's go get our brave on. So until next time, we'll see you later.